poem um, that sort of highlights some of these thoughts. I'm going to read you the poem. And I could read a piece of, of yes. Yeah, I need a copy of the poem. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you can. It's, it's, um, it's, out of it's out of print right now. It's going to be republished this year. It's called Exhibition of the Songbow Painters. Now, I'm glad you asked that question because I want to tell you why it, 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 it's called that. It's about a guy who was an artist who was sent there to do an exhibition to bring back to America and explain to them through his paintings what these people were like. Now here, my ambition was to be an artist, and all of a sudden I'm getting the opportunity to be an artist in this book. Okay, It'll be republished this year. Um, I've got to tell you one other quick war story to tell you the context of this poem. Yes, sir. Huh? You know, I knew somebody was going to ask me that question because I'm asked that question all the time. I was shot at multiple times. I was mortared. You know what a mortar is? You know what a mortar is? It's a bomb. They shoot it out of a tube and go a mile with a mortar. I was mortared many times. Blew up shrapnel all of shot at, but Never, never had to pull my trigger. I shot with a target practice, but I never had to shoot with a All right. But here's an opportunity, not an opportunity. Here's a situation where that could have happened. Um, part of one of my jobs was I was what we call a reaction force team leader. And we had a camp, and the camp had a perimeter. And within inside that perimeter, there were certain targets that were vital to us and became vital targets to what we call the enemy. One of which was a large deposit of fuel oil, fuel and gas, uh, diesel fuel. And all the convoys going from the south all the way up to the northern part of South Vietnam um, had to stop here and tank up, gas up. And, and otherwise they couldn't make it back. So it was very important. And so the, our job was to guard that, that fuel deposit in case of an attack, okay? And we were trained to, if we were told there's an attack, we go to certain free range positions and we, we dig in and we stay there. But, well, it, you know, we had other jobs that was just something that was going to happen in case there was an alert. All right, six months after I was in the country, bam, there's a red alert. A red alert means the enemy has been spotted, we know his mission, he's coming in, and he's coming in soon. Red alert, we all had to go out to our prearranged foxholes, get in our foxholes, and sit there looking down the barrel of our 16 and just sit there and wait. Huh? That would be a little unnerving. Huh? We had to do it until we were told to go go back, until the, the red alert was over. Now, this red alert lasted 48 hours, I'll tell you. We, behind us, is the, is the, are the fuel tanks. In front of us is the perimeter. And I never, we never thought about this until we're down there on red alert looking all night long into the dark. And it suddenly occurred to us, you know, if they start coming in, they're going to lob a mortar into these tanks. And what's going to be behind us is a wall of fire. We have no ability to retreat. Our only option is to stay there and fight. So we, we spent two, two nights out there. And, and all I had to do was think about the person on the other side of the darkness. And it made me think and think and think about it. There were lots of them, but I'm, I'm picturing it as a single man. And I'm thinking, you know what? He's just like me. He doesn't want to be there any more than I do. But he's there because he's being obedient to his country, what they thought was right. Um, he's probably left a wife back home like I did. And so, um, I felt guilty for being here for a little bit. And I realized, you know what? It isn't my fault. It isn't his fault. It's not America's fault. It's not Vietnam's fault. It's humanity's fault. It's, fault. it's a fault of mankind. And that we're all one. We're all part of the human race. We're all the same. And we're all growing. But we all got faults, and we've got to understand that, and we've got to be forgiving. That was very important. That's part of what I felt like I needed to. Um